Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. We're taking a walk from Pradanic Wallace to Mullion Cove along the cliff path. filming it's wonderful to be back out filming again we've parked at Bradanic Wallace and we're going to head along the southwest coast path towards Mullion Cove today hello <laughs> he's so <laughs> pleased to be out we're out we're released <laughs> watch out Cornwall off we go today's walk comes from five walks around Mullion Bradanic Wallace to Mullion Cove three and a half miles Pradnick or Bradanic Wallace is near Mullion just south of Helston on the Lizard Peninsula a quick look at our map here. We start at the parking area, National Trust parking area at Pradanic Wallace, follow the coastal path to Mullion Cove and then come back across fields. So there is a small car parking area here with an honesty box. And it says around the car park there are three farms, once the hub of a medieval manor of Pradanic Wallace and one of the main settlements on the Lizard five centuries ago. Thank you. This is really tight. Look at that. Oh Look at us. We're out. Outside, released. <laughs> oh, it feels wonderful to be out in the sea. It's just down there. I don't know if you can see that. See the sea. It's good to be out today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, can you remember how to do this? No, not really. This might be a bit sketchy. It might be a bit rusty today. Yeah. Yeah, beginning of January was the last film walk we did, wasn't it? I know, I know. It seems like an age ago. So yeah. let's go and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, come, come on. Come on, Come on, boy. Dog's wet already. Oh, no. And there's a gate here. We've got to go and do some gate leaning. Gate leaning. Can't bad. resist a bit of gate leaning. Oh, the gate's moving! <laughs> wobbly gate. It's a wobbly gate. Wobbly gate. Oh. <laughs> I can see the coast, though, Sarah. Yeah. So when we get down to the coast, we're obviously going to the right, aren't we? So yeah, we're going, going back, up. back towards Mullion Cove. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love being out. It's great. Good for the soul. The lizard's geology is very special. We have a load of serpentine down here, which is a rock you can polish. It used to be used in Victorian era to make things like candlestick holders, even mantelpieces. I can actually see the outcrops down here now of that serpentine. Every now and again, you go over a polished bit. It's darker than the rest of the rocks around it. So we also have an old Bob Acton book of Walks on the Lizard and he does give us some advice on how Pradanic is pronounced locally. Like a lot of Cornish words, we're a bit lazy speaking and he says here, Pradanic derives from Bridanoc, meaning British. Probably the name was originally applied to the whole Lizard Point, the first British headlands many sailors would see. Locals pronounce the word as Pradnic which would make a lot more sense to me as a Cornish person. We do tend to lose that middle syllable. So Pradnik or Pradanic, however you pronounce it. This is where we are today. excursion, a little detour. I'm going to head down towards the lower coastal path here. This little stream behind me is meant to be a waterfall at one point. In fact, we can see it from up there. So I'm going to try 
and get a little shot of it. I'm just going to put the camera down whilst I navigate across this ground. Watch it, Mummy. She'll be back in a minute. It's alright, she's giving me the car keys today. We're okay. There's a little path that takes you down to that cove. I'm not going to try it today, it's a bit blustery. But isn't that so pretty? Scramble down the cliff path quite a way. Andrew's going to be doing his nut up there. He's up the top with the dark. <laughs> the water is hitting my face from the waterfall. It's fabulous. What a great day to be out! It's a series of little cascades really. Probably a better one down there, but um, getting to that one, nearly impossible. Probably only visible from the sea. I feel quite exhilarated after my little scramble down there. It's beautiful down there. Next time you do that, I'm going to tether a rope to you. Oh, takes away all the fun. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Sarah's Dog Grooming Services. What are you saying? Look at our lovely dog. We no longer have a bear. He's been trimmed. We did it. We had time and we hooked him up in the garage and I got the clippers out and we've kind of got a cocker spaniel back. And we, boy? Are you going to smile for the camera? No, I want to get on with my walk, mummy. So, okay, I'm getting him to roll now. Yeah. Yeah, so hang on, I've got to turn the cap around so I become somebody else. I'm Fred now. You're Fred the wall builder? I'm Fred the wall builder. All right. Here is my wall. What's happened to your wall, Fred? Well, I built it, but I didn't build it very well and it fell down again. Oh dear, you're going to have to rebuild the wall. I have, right? but I've got to work out which stones to put in the right place because otherwise it's all going to fall down again. Let's go with, uh, yeah, that one. There. Oh, look, it took me ages to make this. Yeah, this one here, uh, that's number 46. Put it up here, look. Here we are. Hang on, that's... Try, try, that's better. There we are, look, I'll be there for hundreds of years now. It's like my sign I put in as well, look. There. Oh, it's got Cornwall on it. In fairness, Fred's gone now. We're back to Andrew. This was a local project, yeah. as far as I know, to, to try and rebuild some of the Cornish hedges. Oh, it's sad to see it on the floor, though. Isn't it? I'm going to take that out again because I don't think that goes there. I think that one goes there. I just want to put it all back together. Don't you? Well, you know where that's fallen down, don't you? What? You know where that's fallen down? Coastal erosion. Coastal erosion. <laughs> stretch of coastline it's quite notorious for shipwrecks and our book tells us of one of the remedy in 1869 and they were a cargo ship carrying coal from Wales and they were smashed against this rock and the crew and the captain found themselves clambering up this cliff face 
to get away from the sea chomping at their heels. It must have been terrifying for them. But the thing that makes me chuckle a little bit, he adds at the end, locals burnt Welsh coal at their haas for months afterwards. As part of our research, we found a photo, didn't we, of a hairy yellow lichen that's very rare. Yeah, things we look up online. <laughs> oh, no. Don't tell us what you look up online because, uh, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. But So we're out on the hunt for a hairy yellow lichen. There's lots of lichen around, isn't there? So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. Lots and lots of lichen. And there's a yellow lichen. But it doesn't look hairy to me. Or light chin. I think it's one of those words that depends. It's a bit like scone and scone. Oh, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Jam first. A lichen strewn rock. Oh, and look at this little sedum. That is so cute. In fact, it's in the crevice here as well. I love the colours of that. Mm. And the lichen like hair coming out. And there's the yellow, but that's not hairy. Perhaps it's only hairy at a certain time of year. To get the kids doing this sort of thing when they were little, it would entertain them for hours on a cliff walk, you know. Let's go and find this bit of treasure. And today, I don't know that I'm going to find my treasure. It's the right colour, but I don't know if I'm going to find it. Today. hope you can hear me we're looking out for a boundary hedge years and years ago the landowners all owned all the land right down to the sea and it marked territories for fishing as well so there is a hedge coming up that marks the boundary between two manor houses and the mullion fishermen were not allowed beyond that point is that about right get off my land yeah Get off my sea. Yeah, get yeah. off my sea, that's my fish. What happens if a fish is like going like that? So they had rights to the land for grazing, they had rights to the land for mining yes. underneath, and they had land rights to the land offshore. But land how, sea offshore. With the sea offshore, that's yeah. yeah, same as the same. <laughs> You're Similar walking thing. on water, you are. <laughs> Anyway, we're they, looking out for a hedge. They owned everything, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, well that's why they were so wealthy, isn't it? What does this hedge look like, Sarah? Cornish hedge, think, stones falling down like that one back there. Say, is it still standing? <laughs> we have a hedge in the middle of a cliff. <laughs> Do you think this is our boundary hedge? If I was from Mullion then, yes. I could fish over there. Yeah. What happens when I get over here? What happens? I don't know. They just have an irritated squire shouting and screaming at you from the land. Going, oh, yeah, oh my, we always see. <laughs> I'd say the wind was in the wrong direction. I accidentally drifted out here. Yeah. Wow. So that's it. That's all you... I wonder how you see that from sea. Bit of a toll. What toll? Pound. The squire's asking me to collect it. Oh! Oh! Because this is the boundary hedge you mean? Yeah. Oh, I haven't got a pound. Stabler. Oh. But I went past you from Mullion. Well, go get past it and I'm going to give you a change. Give me a pound. All right, I'll do that then. All right. Be quiet now. Oh, he's gone. I was too noisy. Apparently this area is renowned for stone chats and you know them by their call. They kind of go, chat, chat, chat. Something like that. Anyway. And the, what's that? <laughs> was that one that just flew over? Yeah, yeah. I think they're all around us. Yeah. I am not a, a kind of like wildlife photographer and I don't think our cameras are up for that detail are they? You can see it with a naked eye though but yeah. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be a bit quicker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll own up to doing this walk before and just around this corner in a minute is the most superb reveal isn't it? Yeah. Mullion all the way down to Mount Bay. Extent of the cliff. Yeah, this little promontory here is called Menti Hule. 
That's an easy thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> but the reason we're here, this is all that remains of the old Coast Guard lookout, Sarah. Wow. Um, you can just about make it out. There's yeah. little holes in the ground here, and there's a little bit of a wall there. But um, yeah, they would have come up here and I suppose just kept watch of what was going on, wasn't it? Book tells us that this stretch of coastline is a, it's called the Mullion Roads, and it says that in March 1867, the local reverend noted that there was between 400 and 500 vessels anchored in this stretch of water and the reason why was because in a northeasterly gale it would have been perilous for any ship of sail to try and round Lizard Point so skippers would steer into the roads where they would cower under the high cliffs which protected them from the brunt of the wind and mariners call this a lee shore however if the wind suddenly veered to the southwesterly it's easy to imagine the panic as vessels found themselves being beaten into the very cliffs who were hitherto giving them shelter. And in the sea here you will see Mullion Island. Tell us what you know about Mullion Island. It's half a mile offshore. Tick. Very, very popular ground, uh, breeding ground for birds. Tick. It's covered in bird <laughs> Beep. <laughs> over there and it's lovely and I take this one it was used in an adaptation in 2015 of Agatha Christie's and then there were none starring Aidan Turner oh it's funny you know that <laughs> It's had a good cast, isn't it? Yeah, right. it really Sam Neill was in it, wasn't it? Yeah, if you can find a copy of it, it's well worth watching. It's brilliant. Yeah. The most entertaining thing is that they put a CGI house on the island and it just looks so wrong. <laughs> if you've been here, I mean, it just looks so weird to see a house on Mullion Island. So we need to now navigate our way through that herd of cows. Andrew's a bit worried because the bull up there has got horns like this. So I think we're going to put the cameras away and just make sure we get our little doggy and us safely through. I'm sure there's no problem. I don't think he's going to move very fast because he's ankle deep in mud. He's going to chat nicely and go, hello. Hello, Mr. Bull. How are you today? I'm feeling happier now. He's looking at us now. Hi! Can be a bit of bully. <laughs> Crikey, he's huge, isn't he? Filming on the hoof. <laughs> on a serious note though, they are here to keep the vegetation down, aren't they? Yeah. As a natural way of controlling the shrubland and the grasses and the cliffside. So is that the main reason they're here? Ah, uh, nay! They're here to look beautiful. <laughs> No, but look, that's the first time you spot Mullion Cove. Oh yeah, it's down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible game of hide and seek. Looks so calm today. We've been down here before and the waves have been crashing over that wall. Incredible, really. So we're on a bit of a quest now to figure out where they took this photo from. So you reckon if I come behind you and try and line it up, yeah, it's not bad actually. I think it might have been a little bit higher up. So what's changed looking at that then? Not a lot, is it? No. It's boating today. The outline of just above the harbour wall has changed where they had that landslip. Not much else though. Pretty good. Oh, and I think this might be a fresh landslip just in front of us here. <laughs> okay, let's go back. <laughs> it's like many coves in Cornwall and a lot of fishermen in Cornwall years ago, pilchards were caught as their main catch of the day. Five pilchard companies work for Mullion Cove, groups of fishermen who would buy seine nets boats and the rights to fish in certain areas. 
These areas were called stems, were in fact lanes drawn from the cliffs like we mentioned before. The stretch of the sea from here to Pradanic Head, owned by the Robarts estate, was divided into five such lanes and the Mullion men would draw lots to decide who would have first shot at the shoal as it passed by. Pilchard lookouts or hewers would patrol the cliffs, waiting for the fish to show colour, so the sea would turn crimson with their gills. The whole community would spring into action, launching the same boats, and afterwards pressing and salting the landed fish in the cellars. And this cove would have been full of pilchards if you'd come here, say, 100, 150 years ago. Tiny little cottage behind you there, Sarah. I know, you can see. it's built into the rock, isn't it? So it was for the net lofts, wasn't it? Yeah. So that and the winch house actually predate the harbour here? Yeah, and I've seen photos online during the Second World War where the sea has eroded the like end of the left-hand pier and it wasn't repaired for years. This, this cove was actually notorious for the harbour walls falling apart. Mullion Harbour last autumn made a video we found out what that post was used for. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. At this point we follow the public footpath sign and start ascending up the hill. head across fields now Sarah and then I think eventually we get to a stone cross. It's beautiful isn't it? It is quite beautiful. Once you get up close to these you actually appreciate how big and how heavy they are. Yeah. And can you see this? It's got the engraving of the cross up there. Very clearly, yes. It's on the back as well. It's not quite so clear though, is it? No. I'm just about make out a cross on there. This was found, actually knocked over. Oh, wow. And it was restored by the local villagers in 1852. And they put the top back on and they used metal prongs apparently to actually reinforce this. As far as I understand, it's obviously a medieval cross. Oh, okay. It, it, it used to work as a boundary stone that we've talked about, but they were also put on the pathways to churches as well. Saints so, ways, Saints wasn't ways. it? So this is actually a, a church route, effectively, that we're following down into Mullion. Down here is the ancient chapel of Pradanic or Pradnik. Apparently, it once stood in the farmyard of the manor. They don't know how big it was. There's a few mullions, which is very difficult to fix the date from when that chapel stood. It was rebuilt and it's the white building down there today. Attached to that was a jarin, J A R I N E, and it is now an auction. It's formerly a burial ground, and there's a bit of a myth and legend connected to this. And it basically said anybody that disturbs the site of the auction, there will be a death. Just to back this up, it says as a fact, it was last broken, the soil was last broken in the year 1820, and the same year, a Mullion man was murdered on his way home from Helston. So where do you think the orchard is then, Andrew? Oh, I thought it must be around here. Do you think it's in their front garden? Wow, it looks really old. And have you seen the mullions over the windows? I know. On that they are absolutely gorgeous, aren't yeah. they? Mm. So cute. I wonder if they know the story. <laughs> <laughs> I love how these old myths and legends spring up and then there's irrefutable proof to back it up that you must behave or else. I ain't going to be digging up any fields around here anyway, just in case. Our final field, this one comes out on the road and just down there at the end of the telegraph pole line is Pradanic Wallace Farm.
Today's walk comes from five walks around Mullion. Pradanic Wallace to Mullion Cove, three and a half miles. Our walk today started here at Pratnick Wallace Farm. Took the coast path all the way to Mullion Cove. I do love Mullion Cove. Oh, it's absolutely glorious, isn't it? So it's a three and a half mile walk, so it's a, it's a decent enough walk and a fantastic time today. It's just lovely to be out and about again. Oh, the freedom, the sense of freedom has been exceptional today. I've really enjoyed that. The mat work, the instructions worked. We yep. didn't get lost. It's been fantastic terrain. What, are you gonna score it? It's gonna be a 10 out of 10 for me. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a 10 out of 10, isn't it? Well done, book. <laughs>